Hey, what's up, folks? How is it going? So today's interview question is, what is Terraform Drift and what are the best practices to manage it? So if I go to HashiCorp documentation, uh, it's there detecting and managing Drift with Terraform. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, there are a lot of information available here. So what I'm trying to do here, like I will just give you the key concepts. That should be enough for the interview question answer. And I will also explain you with the example so that it's very clear to you. Okay. So let's uh, see the definition first. And then uh, we'll see the example. So what is drift? Drift is a situation where real world state infrastructure differs from its defined configuration in Terraform, either due to manual changes, external tools, or infrastructure failure. So you have deployed resources using Terraform. Now that resource was changed, maybe you tag out the bucket change by someone or some configuration tool, or something got deleted, destroyed by someone, by mistake, uh, he shut it down, shut down the machine. So that's a manual change. Some external tool also can uh, modify something. Right? Or there may be infrastructure failure where the easy to instance crash, let's say. So the other three ways that can be changed from what you what you really wanted, like what is a desired state and actual state. Difference between the desired state and actual state. And that's a drift. That is a change. Right? Drift. And we'll see uh, some example of the drift here. Here, what I'm trying to do, here I'm trying to create a SD bucket, Terraform demo example 25 gen, AWS region uh, US system one. And the other tags I'm uh, putting it in the bucket. And then finally, we'll be printing the bucket. So very simple script. I have already executed uh, Terraform in it. So now I will run Terraform plan. Okay, so Terraform plan got executed. It says want to add zero to change, zero to this time. So now let me do Terraform apply. So it's asking, do you want to perform these actions? One will be added, changes to output, bucket name will be, a bucket will be added. So let's write the bucket, create the bucket. Terraform demo example 25 gen bucket is getting created now. And so once the bucket is created, uh, we can see that uh, using Terraform show. And we can also run AWS command to check whether that bucket really exists or not. Terraform show basically will uh, check your state file and will uh, show that data. The resource. Yeah. So it shows the date uh, thing that bucket got created. Terraform demo example 25 that bucket is there. I can also run, uh, not this one. I can run AWS SDLS for. So if that bucket is there, it will show. So see, that bucket got created. Now, now, uh, what I will do, uh, I will destroy this bucket manually. Manually, I will destroy this bucket. Let's destroy this bucket. And then, if I run Terraform plan, let's see what happens. Before destroying, if I would have run Terraform plan, it would have said that zero to create, zero to destroy, zero to, to test because bucket is already there and the state file also saying a bucket is there. So it's matching. But now it should detect the drift. Now bucket is there in state file, but in reality, an in actual infrastructure bucket is not there. It got deleted. Someone went uh, and deleted that bucket. So there is a drift. So now if I run Terraform plan, it should detect that. It should say now that want to add. If I wouldn't have deleted, it would have said zero to add, zero to destroy, zero to update, etc. But now it should detect that drift. I'm running Terraform plan, it should detect the drift. 
So internally, it's running refreshing state. See, here, it's internally refreshing the state. Okay. And then it knows that it has to create. This bucket will be created. So it's showing want to add 0 to change, 0 to destroy, 0 to destroy. So it has detected the drift. Let's see other points. Now, Terraform state, uh, in the state file, Terraform.tier state, it mapped resources in the configuration to the real world resources. Real world resources are mapped to this uh, Terraform state. It tracks the metadata like dependencies. How each resource depends on the other resource, right? That dependency, resource attributes, like S3 bucket has some tags or some version is enabled or some attributes are enabled. So that is also tracked. Then cache has attributes for better performance and safety. And it can be stored locally or remotely for collaboration. So this at your state, state file you can store locally and you can store remotely also using a backend. S3 back, backend with some uh, DynamoDB log for collaboration. Because if multiple team members are applying Terraform apply, doing Terraform apply, so they need to uh, have that in the remote uh, backend. Common Terraform show, we have already seen that it uses the entire current state. And refresh, uh, you can uh, manually also run Terraform refresh to see the drift. But uh, you don't need to run manually because Terraform plan uh, does that job for you. Uh, you can run Terraform plan and it detects the drift, okay? So it detects the drift, what we have just seen. It, it it may be like in the example I have shown that bucket got deleted, but it may happen that someone changed the bucket tag. So tag was development, I changed it to development one, two, three. So it's a drift because in the configuration file, it was uh, development, state files on development, but uh, actually, Someone went and changed it to development one two three. So it, it will detect the drift. And uh, this lifecycle options are there uh, uh, for managing drift. Uh, lifecycle option we have discussed: prevent, destroy, even, uh, ignore changes, create before destroy. The other things. In one of my uh, previous interview question, I have dis discussed also showed the example. We'll uh, come to this later. So how to uh, prevent drift? Avoid manual changes. Restrict access to Cloud Console to ensure changes are always made by Terraform. But that is one thing, right? You, or whatever infrastructure changes will be done, it should be always approved. Means infrastructure will be there in the code and it will be manually, nobody will go and uh, make some changes. It will be always choose this uh, Terraform. Any changes you want to do, don't do manually or any maybe a bucket updation or some tag updation, don't do manually. Give very restricted uh, access, uh, only view access maybe, and all the changes will be done to Terraform. So you can restrict access. I mean, users, you can uh, get, uh, permission can be restricted for the user role based access. You can do. then enable lifecycle rules in Terraform configuration. So lifecycle rule can block you know, how you uh, manage your resource. If you think it's a very important resource, you don't want to be destruct uh, it to be destroyed. So you can. Enable prevent destroy lifecycle rule. Or if you think that some tags will be changed, you should not bother. So Terraform should not bother about that. So you can uh, say that it should be ignored. Ignore changes. Like you apply changes, even if the drift, ignore it because it's not that important that a tag is changed. It's not that important. Maybe some other tool will change the tag or manually someone will change the tag. So in that case, you ignore it. So that is that is another scenario. Then automatic drip detection. Uh, you can run CI/CD pipelines automatically run Terraform plan and check is there any drip detected. If drip detected, uh, maybe you can send out a mail or notification, Slack notification, etc. You can also integrate tools like Terraform Cloud or Space Lift for real-time drift monitoring. So Terraform, uh, Terraform Cloud, they provide a lot of advanced level features, and you can use this uh, for real-time drift monitoring. Real time, it will monitor if there are any changes in the uh, system. Then, audit infrastructure changes. Set up logging in your cloud provider to detect manual and unauthorized changes. For example, enable cloud drain. If someone changes by mistake or accidental changes happens, you'll be able to audit who changes, why changed, when it got changed, right? And GCP's audit log or Azure monitor for similar tracking on AWS cloud drain. 
So these are the important points if you want to prevent it, avoid manual changes, give restricted permission, enable life cycle rule, uh, ignore or prevent destroy, automatic detection through CICD, audit infrastructure changes. Now let's look at the best practices. Best practices, version control your code. Always commit your Terraform configuration to version control for easy tracking of changes. Any changes, let it be version control. Changes should not go to uh, infrastructure directly. That's why we have infrastructure as a code. So all the changes will be audited, tracked, monitored, and it should be version control. A regularly monitor drift, that is another important best practice. And third one is document the change. Ensure changes are documented and agreed upon to reduce likelihood of out of band updates. Don't do ad hoc uh, changes. Any changes to the infrastructure, it should be documented. Why, why changes required? It should be approved. It should be like uh, there in the repo so that people know what's really happening. All the team should be on the same page. Team members should be on the same page. Now let's discuss uh, today's uh, daily quiz. Uh, every day I post daily quiz on my LinkedIn page, DevOps Challenge Hub. You guys can follow my uh, LinkedIn page, also WhatsApp channel, where I post quizzes, uh, contests, etc. You can take participate. You can participate in that also. So today's quiz is, how does Terraform handle drift when it detects a resource attribute mismatch? It automatically fixes the mismatch without any action needed, skips resource and continue, it generates a plan that shows the necessary change, or it ignores the drift and keeps original configuration. Each drift has to be fixed manually by running Terraform replication. So we have seen that it should generate it generates a plan that shows the necessary changes. So this is the right answer. So that's it for today. Hope you like this video. Please share it with your friends. Please like it, share it, and provide your feedback. This will keep me motivated to create uh, more such uh, videos and also subscribe to my channel, follow my uh, WhatsApp channel and uh, LinkedIn page, participate in the quiz. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for watching.